Welcome to another video on Vue.js, specifically on Vuex, its state management package. So in the last videos of this series, we took a basic project which didn't have great state management, added Vuex, directly manipulated and got the state, improved that by adding getters to get the state, and now we want to improve it even more to also use mutations a tool which allows us to edit the state in a better way than we're doing it right now. So this is the project we created thus far or we edited thus far. Getting the state works great. Now I want to go to these methods where we actually manipulate the state. How can we improve this? Well, let's start with the registration. Here when we register a user, what are we doing? We're changing the registration state on the user itself and we're pushing a new registration with the date of that registration to our registrations array. Would be great if we don't do that here, but instead also in some other place. So in the store, I'm going to cut the code here and go to my store. We added the state through something called a mutation because it mutates, it changes the state. We add mutations just like we add getters by adding the mutations property to our store. And with that added here, I can now set up a mutation. For example, the register mutation. Now like the getters, this receives the current state and it needs that because it will change it. Here, what I want to do is I will copy in my code and now we will replace it step by step. So we're fetching the date, this is fine. Now here where I register or where I change the user state, I want to access state users. And now the issue is, issue is which user. We somehow need to get that information. Because here in the mutation, I don't know on which user the register method should be run on or should be executed on. Therefore, I will go back to the component and the cool thing or the useful thing about mutations is we can pass the user or any payload. So here I want to pass the user and I will do this when I show how to call a mutation. Right now, let's simply assume we get the user. So as a second argument, I will get any payload I pass. This can be an object or just a value, whatever. Here I know it will be the user. So in my state where I have my users, I want to find the user where the user ID equals the ID of the user I'm passing. And since this, this, this is the same name, I will simply assume that I get the user ID as an argument here. So now I can check if, or I can find which user in my array of users has this ID. This is what I'm doing here. And I will store that user in a new constant. And in a next step, I will set registered to true for this user I just got here. So I slightly changed the code. With that, we're adjusting the user. Now let's add a registration. For that, I will first create the registration, just splitting it up so that it's a bit easier to read. I will create a new registration. And this is simply a JavaScript object where I want to store the user ID of the user who registered. Well, I'm passing that anyway, so that is easy. Then the name of the user. This can be fetched from the user, which I retrieved here. And finally, the date. Well, and here I can simply copy the code I already was using. And with that, I can get rid of this direct assignment accessing my store. What I need to do though is of course I need to access state registrations and push this new registration on it. This is a mutation now making sure that I added the state in a different way. I will do the same for the methods here in the registrations.view file. Or the method, it's one method, it's the unregister method. So let me cut the code here too and add a new mutation, unregister. This mutation here, of course, also gets the state and it gets the ID or the, the registration. But here I simply want to get the user ID again, let's say. 
So I will need to change that code in the component. And then I will basically first copy the code so that we have it there. But the first thing I'll do is I'll search for the user. I'm going to copy that code. I do get the user ID, so I can replace this search algorithm here now. I can now set this registration status to false. And now I also need to find the right registration. So I will get it here, registration, by simply, not this, by simply accessing this, or excuse me, state registrations find. And here I want to find the registration where the registration user ID equals my user ID. And I need to return this. And I just saw there is a syntax error here, of course. I need to return it here too, or not a syntax error. It's an error, a logical error. And also set this to two equal signs. The same is true up here. I wanna find a user where this condition is true. So I was using the function wrongly. Sorry about that. So make sure that in all defined methods, you're returning this check basically where we said user ID equals user ID with two equal signs because it's a logical check, a comparison. So with this, I'm now also fetching my registration down here, finding it by the user ID. And that now allows me to access my state, my registrations array there, and now use the splice method to splice the right registration. I can simply fetch it or find it by again using index of and passing the registration I just identified up there. And of course only one item should be spliced. So with that I also got my unregister mutation in place. Now it's time to call them. Now the important thing about calling is we don't call the mutation directly. So here in the method which gets fired when I click on the register button I will access this store and now I run commit. So I don't access mutations and execute the method, I run the commit method instead. And commit can be called in two ways. Here I'll show the first way. The first argument then is the name of the mutation as a string. So here it's the register mutation I want to call, so register. And the second argument is the payload. Here. This is simply the user ID, though that could also be an object or an array, anything. So now that is the second argument here. This is one way of calling it. In the registration.view file, I'll show the other way. I'll also access the store, execute commit, and now I simply pass an object, and now this has to be an object, where I have a type property. This property named type has to be specified which now is the name of the mutation, unregister, this mutation here. And then the second property is the payload. So here is user ID registration, user ID. And here I could have multiple other payloads too, but when passing it like this, I can't access it directly as the payload like this, user ID, because this will now be an object. Instead here I would need to have a payload or any name you want to choose and access it on this payload, user ID. So that is the alternative. Now with that let's save it and reload and let's see if this works. Registering looks good and unregistering also looks very good. So now this works, but now using mutations to have a better way and a preferred way of accessing and manipulating the store or the state in the store I should say. With that we improved the project even more. Now our logic is mainly in the store and in the components. Look how little code we now got there. They got really really much slimmer and that is the good thing about using Vuex having your logic in one central place and if you now want to make changes or use the same mutation, make the same edit from multiple places in your app. It's now super easy because all you have to do is call commit or if you want to get a value, call that getter and it's super easy to manage your project. We're not, not done yet. There is a one big limitation to mutations about which we will learn in the next video and there we will also learn how to solve it. Async. See you there. Bye.